What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko. Uh, we're back at Alpha's house and uh, we're doing another deck profile. And uh, today's deck is a Go Second OTK deck. So because we're in a hand trap format, I thought it'd be fun to do a lot of uh, OTK profiles, decks that want to go second, hand trap your opponent, and uh, just try to push for a lot of damage. And one deck that does it really well and probably the best OTK deck uh, in the game right now is Crusadia. Um, and I think this deck is super good because it can fit so many non-engine and as long as you open two names You can pretty much set up an OTK kind of board, right? So uh, that's why I want to show it off But if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content Just like this one. We upload five days a week on the channel uh, Deck profiles, combo videos, shorts, all that good stuff. All right So with that being said, let's get into the profile here. We are starting off with three Crusadia Maximus, three Draco, three Arborea, three Reclusia, as well as two Leonis so this is the full package over here. The reason we're pretty much maxing out on all the names except uh, Leonis is because, again, like I said earlier, you really just need to see any two names and uh, you can pretty much set up a combo where you can uh, break boards, right? Or not just break boards, but OTK. That's why as long as you see any two names and like three hand traps or Kaijus or whatever else you guys are going to see in this profile, it becomes a really powerful deck. So literally, that's why you're just playing so many of them. And then a, I guess, honorary Crusadia monster is three parallel Exceed. So the reason Exceed works so well in this deck is because one, obviously it sets up your extra deck, but the thing that's really good about parallel Exceed is all of your monsters, any name is on its own a link one monster. And so if you go link one into Magius and then uh, you go parallel Exceed, you're going to be getting the Exceed effect, the Magius effect. So it's kind of like opening a second name, right? So if you open any one name plus Exceed, it's pretty much like opening two names. And this is going to get you access to a rank four, which is really nice as well. So that's why Exceed is power very powerful. Also, I want to say one thing about Exceed is this, if this gets hand trapped, because I know a lot of people will hand trap this with like an Imperm, let's say, right? And then what ends up happening is it stays as level eight. You don't get the second body on board. That's fine because it's done its job on putting it like by putting itself onto your side of the field and activating the Magius, right? So this card is really good. It baits out a lot of hand traps. So that's it for all the Crusadia names and uh, Parallel Exceed, I guess. I think these are all really important to play. Leonis just not being the best one because it's the one that does piercing damage and you don't really care so much about piercing. So that's why I only playing two Leonis. And then for the Crusadia spells, we're just playing one Revival, one Power, and one Testament. I just like playing one of each. Uh, basically, if you see one, you search the other in your combo. Um, you don't ever need all, any, like all three of these to combo. You just need like one. Like this is really the best one to help you OTK. Uh, these two are pretty good. This is not bad if you're not OTK. You can set up a uh, play where essentially you're drawing a bunch of cards. And then power is really good because it makes sure that all your Crusadia effects go through. Uh, power also has a really cool effect that synergizes really well with Reclusia. I can actually say it here real quick. So Reclusia has an effect where you can target a, a monster you control and a monster your opponent controls and pop both. And so that's really good because if you have Magius, you summon your Reclusia, activate the Reclusia effect, target Magius, target another card. You can chain power targeting your Magius, and then this way your Magius is unaffected, so it won't be destroyed, but you still pop another card. So power and uh, Reclusia have pretty good synergy in that sense. Um, but that's it. You're just playing these three. These are the only three that you need. Then for consistency, we're playing two Desires. Desires is the best draw card in this deck just because uh, you're playing three of them everything, so you just need more cards in your hand. So two Desires, I think, makes a lot of sense. And then we're playing uh, one called by and one harpies. Called by is, I think, really important just because, again, it is a hand trap based format. So having the called by is really good. And on top of that, like this deck doesn't actually lose super hard to hand traps, I guess, other than Nibiru, I would say. But like, that's really it, right? So called by is really good into hand traps where you're like, okay, I just want this to resolve. Or if you're activating desires, your opponent goes ash, like you want the desires to resolve, right? Kind of thing. And then harpies, of course, we don't have a lot of back row hate in the main deck. so. Harpy's guy is the back row hate that you're going to be playing in the main deck. Then, um, so this deck does something really different than most decks that want to go second. So first thing, you're playing six Kaijus. You want to be able to break boards and putting a Kaiju on your opponent's side of the field. First of all, these are just really good in today's format, right? Because if you're putting a Kaiju onto your opponent's side of the field and then you're summoning your um, Equimax, right? And then you're summoning this on top of the Equimax. This is going to gain the attack, which is really nice. But the more important thing with the Kaiju is that obviously you just want to break boards, right? So on top of the OTK, you just wanted to break board with these. And a lot of decks, when you want to go second, right? You want to either break boards or you want to stop your opponent from making boards. A deck like this one, funny enough, wants to do both. Now, it might not make a lot of sense, but the reason you want to do that is because you really don't want your opponent to go put four negates up on the board. I know Super Heavy Samurai puts up like Savage plus Baron uh, plus Apple sometimes. Um, plus a Regulus, right? So you don't want your opponent, like one Kaiju is not gonna break that board, right? Unfortunately. So for that reason, what you wanna do is you wanna play the board breakers so that if your opponent puts up like a single boss monster or a single like an Omni Negate, um, you can break that 
and then you can proceed to OTK, right? So for this deck, we're playing the Kaijus to be able to break those kind of boards, but then we're playing a ton of hand traps so that our opponent doesn't necessarily have the option and the opportunity to make those kind of boards, if that makes sense. So essentially you're playing nine hand traps here and you're playing the six board breakers. You you, you go with these hand traps like Ash, Ogre, Droll is gonna, like oh, Super Heavy Samurai can't really play through Droll. They can put up maybe a one negate through Droll, right? Okay, so then boom. So you have a, if you open Droll plus Kaiju plus three names or two names and anything else, like you're winning the game kind of thing, right? So that's kind of the theory behind it where you still want to open hand traps, but you also want to open something to break boards. You know, like I know typically people either want to play board breakers or they want to play hand traps. Again, in this deck, I think it's the only deck that it makes sense to be playing both because you want your opponent to make a board, but you just want it to be a smaller board if that makes sense. So that's it for the hand traps and board breakers. And lastly, for the 40th card, we're playing one double or nothing. This is my Crusadia spicy tech that I've been really, really enjoying. It's really easy to make rank fours in this uh, deck. And again, it's one of those things where if you are putting up like a Kaijo on your opponent's side of the field and you can't get to Equimax or your opponent hand traps you and you just have two level four monsters on the board, um, you just go to Utopia double package and you're just OTK with that, right? So it's just another OTK package that this deck can play and it just it's, it's really powerful. So that's it for the 40th card right over here. It's 40 cards in the main. Uh, moving on to the extra deck real quick, actually. We're just going to start, I guess, with the OTK package over here. So one Utopia double, one Utopia. Again, that's for the double or nothing. You, of course, want to play those. Uh, Baguska is also really powerful because you are playing a more or less link-based deck. So if you're able to set up your board, like if you're forced to go first, let's say, you can set up a board plus Baguska, which is really nice, right? So that's why I really like Baguska. It's really good into branded, really good into most decks, actually. And then for the link monsters, we're playing Axis Code, Apo, and you're playing Crusader Abramax. These are your link fours. These are the only ones you'll ever go into. Apple, of course, when you're forced to go first is really powerful. This, a lot of decks can't actually have an out, don't actually have an out to at all. So this is really powerful. And then Axis Code helps you OTK as well. So you guys can see, like we have the Crusadia package to OTK. You have the Utopia package to OTK. You have the Access Code package to OTK. So many different ways you can OTK in this deck, which is really nice. And then you have Unicorn as well as IP. These help you get, like IP gets helps you get into this. Unicorn helps you get into this. Um, so all these cards are really, really important to get into the extra deck. And then for the Crusadia cards, we're playing two Equimax. Uh, two Regulix and three Magius. I'm pretty sure this is kind of self-explanatory, not much explaining to do here. So um, yeah, that's it for the extra deck, 15 cards in the extra deck over there. I think it's I think it's just really consistent. There's the fact that this deck has so many different options um, to go second and still be able to OTK is, is really, really important. So with that being said, let me show you guys a quick side deck here. Now keep in mind, this side deck is gonna be built based off of your locals. So everyone obviously can use this as a skeleton more than anything, but it's just some options. So Nibiru is really powerful in today's format as well. I didn't chose not to main the deck the Nibiru because against like purely in some other decks, Nib's not the best. So Nib I think is one of those cards that's really good when you side it because there are some hand traps here that aren't necessarily good into every deck, right? So whenever you have a hand trap that's not good into one deck, you put Nib in instead. Um, and then I found that any hand trap in there that's not good into a deck, Nib is good into that deck. So that's why three Nib. Uh, three Lightning Storm as well. Again, you don't have much back row hate in the main deck, so Lightning Storm mostly is your back row hate. Then when you are forced to go first, we are playing three, uh, there can be only one. Uh, so funny enough, there can only be one works super well in this deck because all of the monsters are different um, types. So. If you're forced to go first, you can just go up there, can only be one, set up like a quick board, and then boom, you have that on the board, which is really nice. Three anti-spell, I, I actually was gonna, so I was between this and um, Dimensional Barrier. Uh, you guys can play anti-spell, you guys can play Dimensional Barrier. I chose anti-spell, I just feel like post Sayak uh, anti-spell uh, is gonna be really, really important. But yeah, D-Barrier is really good as well into something like Branded and whatnot. So it's kind of really up to you how you guys want to go about it, but I just like three anti-spell. And then lastly, I'm playing three Judgment. Again, when you're forced to go first, you have nine cards here that you can go first. You can side out nine hand traps. And then this way you're able to set up like kind of quick boards. Like if you're able to set up boards like IP um, plus like any link to, like a lot of the time you can end on like a board like this. And then like, you know, with any back row setup. And then depending on the deck that you're playing against, IP and Regulix can make like your Avermax. And then a lot of decks can't out the Avermax. Um, or if you have IP plus another monster, you go into Unicorn and then try to go with the access code for your turn to win, which is really nice. So you guys can see like, if you look at the ad types here, and this is why it works so well with There Can Only Be One, is that this is like a beast, this is a Cybers, right? So if you have There Can Only Be One on the board, it's not like you can go into this, but then you have options for like Apple, for example, um, you know, and there's just so many different things you guys can do. And that's why the deck just works out so well. That's it. That's it for the, the deck. That's it for the side deck. Again, the side deck you guys can always build to your own personal preference. If you go to a locals, that's like all brand players and definitely play the barrier. If you go to a locals, that's all Koshtar players. 
um, then you guys can probably play more Kosh or Hate. So again, the, the side deck is always going to be built based off of what you guys think is best. But uh, I think generally for the format, this deck is built pretty well. And I think the side deck is built pretty well as well. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, Alpha, for letting me use your house and recording this video. I appreciate you. And uh, that's really all I got to say. I think Crusade is a really fun deck. I think it's one of the better decks going second in today's format. I feel like it's really underrated and people don't know where to hit this deck to actually stop it. So you guys can be that to your advantage. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate you so much. With that, Spakos, I don't know. Peace.